Hey folks, Mike and McGee here. As you can see, I've got boys in the boat behind me. They are gonna paddle over to the other side over here and they're gonna get an otter out of the water that I just popped. My brother-in-law, Jake, that you see behind me, spotted this otter in my pond. Those things can eat your fish up so fast, it ain't even funny. So we just got done having our family meal and wow i've never seen an otter here before and he sure was here just big as dallas so i snuck out we watched about uh, three minutes before he popped up and i missed him he was on the bank and i missed him he popped his old head up and i didn't miss the second time <laughs> he's floating isn't that him floating there yeah he's floating there good yeah, let's go get him with the boat. Yeah. So they're gonna get him right now. We'll see, see what we got. You see him, Nathan? He don't want to grab him. <laughs> I bet he's gonna make David grab it. Grab him, David. Oh. Wow. Is that? A That's definitely an otter, 100%. I don't think it's like on the large side, but I'm oh, glad because yeah. they eat more when they're bigger. Got. Pretty good head shot there, but my first shot was a plum miss. Did you hear a loud boom? Yeah, I hear it. I heard yeah, it. The nieces and the nephews are awful excited about this. We got a pretty good navigator bringing her right in. Finley, be careful, he's going to run you over. Down goes Frazier. <laughs> oh, man. Close the there. Uh, what do you think, kids? That's the first otter I've ever killed or ever touched. Man. Wow. You just touched it? You think that your buddy would like to have that fur? Yeah. Look at those teeth. Fish eating teeth right there. Yeah, It'd be interesting to look in his <laughs> guts and see what he'd been eating. I don't like that. Swim. Swim. Oh, oh, All right. We were out there in the boat. I went out to the bank. All of a sudden, fish took off. Yeah. And there was a catfish. Oh. And then it came back and just sat there by the way. Wow. Well, I'm glad he didn't get it. Yeah. Huh. He'd have to eat. Quite a bit more than what he could hold, but what <laughs> yeah. Well, like yeah, they do. Wow. They do eat a lot of fish. They do eat yeah. a lot. But that I catfish was it. about the size of him, I, I think. Yeah. Yeah, a little bit smaller. Mm. I bet it would be hard for me to swim a bear. Yeah. My boots on. Yeah. Well, I'm glad it's actually seasoned for him because. If he was in my pond eating my fish, I'd have to take him out as a nuisance. Yeah. Uh, all these young ones are coming around. Matt, what do you think about this? Have you ever seen an otter before? Did they just find Yeah, but it was mounted. Mounted, yeah. Not in our pond. That is so strange. We measured this thing. It is 38 and a half inches from the tip of the nose to the base of the tail. 38 and a half exactly. I don't know if that's a big or not because I'm, I'm no otter person. I do not know. Their tail is kind of like a rudder. It's flat this way. But I know one thing. I was checking to see male or female. It's a female. But out the rectum, there is some stuff squirt that squirted on me that does not smell good. And it's not urine. It's not good, I tell you that. Some kind of gland. And I'm getting back to it right now. And I'm not going to skin this on camera, but when I get it skinned and stuff, we're going to cut the meat up. We're going to fry it. We're going to see what it tastes like. I don't have very high expectations for a fish eating animal. Very low expectations. But we can't throw it away. <laughs> Not when you got all these people to feed. Yeah. <laughs> all right, folks, as you see, I got the otter here. Pretty good sized chunk of hunk of meat right there. I'm amazed at how meaty he is, and he's got some fat on him, and that's a little concerning because a lot of wild fat's no good. 
A lot of wild fat is terrible, actually. I soak this dude in this pot right here full of water all night. Here's his heart. They have a big heart because an animal that stays underwater a long time, they have a big heart. That's just the way it is. I'm gonna start cutting him up and get him ready for the frying pan. My nephew and my nieces, my brother-in-law and my sister, they're all still here in town. This is their last day in town. And they expressed some desire to try it, which might blow a lot of your poor little minds. But I ain't the only one in my family that's a little bit interested in what different animals taste like. So I'm going to take this dude and I'm going to get him in this skillet in the frame. Right now I'm taking off them hindquarters. That's the two hindquarters right there. Look at that. Pretty as a picture. Nice big blocky thing. I'm going to cut this middling meat, which I'm amazed at how chunky this middling meat is. That is bacon and a half right there. I'm going to take it off. And this is the way that you would do any animal like this. Coon, squirrel, skunk, any of them. If you think I ain't ate skunk, you ain't look back at my channel. That's how I broke onto this scene, folks. Now, I'm going to cut these shoulders off. I'm going to start right down the middle. Cut them muscles loose. They're, they're powerful little animals from, because they use them front legs to swim with. They have webbed front feet. Look what a shoulder. Wow, wow, wow. If it's good meat, it's gonna be a good food source because there's a lot of meat here. A lot of meat here. It's gonna come right around. You can hear Frank in the background. He's trying to get my skillet washed up. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah, he says, yeah. Ain't he sweet? <laughs> That's a long rib cage, son. These guys are double the rib cage of a normal possum or coon. Now we're just gonna take these scissors, Frank was so kind to bring me. One rib at a time. These guys have a lot of ribs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Just to get it into a decent size for eating, I'm gonna split it down the middle because that possum you seen us eat yesterday did not have half of this rib material. That's just one side, unbelievable. But look at that. That's long and big. Oh, I know what it is. And <laughs> what is it? That, uh, it's that otter. otter. That's right. It's some dark meat. Look here. Uh, be honest with you, it smells like it's going to taste rank. <laughs> but we will find out, won't we, Caleb? We ain't afraid to try it. We got some good help. This morning, going to be showing up here in about an hour and a half. Actually, in about an hour or so. So I've got to get this frying and get that oven hot and get it baking. I'll cut this one more time across here just to help it fit into the skillet a little better. All right, there you have it. This, this, and this is all the back spine. This, and this, and this, and this is the ribs. Here's your shoulders, your belly, and your hind legs, and your heart. That's a pile of meat from one little critter. So I'm going to get these things breaded up and fried. And when they get here, we're going to see how good it is or terrible. Fingers are crossed. We don't discriminate. But if something is terrible tasting, we'll tell you. All right, I'm just going to use some plain old white flour, but I am going to lay the camp dog to it because if anything screams Cajun, it's wild meat. And if this ain't wild meat, grits ain't groceries. Mm. 
Mm-mm-mm. Son. Frying good. We did not have room in that skillet for all that meat. We still have the ribs and the tail part left. All right, folks, on these big old chunks like this, this wild animal, once you flip it, you gotta go in the oven. And it needs to bake on around 350 for a good hour before it's ever gonna be edible. That's right. This old codger has got a lot of experience eating wild farming. <laughs>
Jeff, what are you making jokes about now, sir? Nothing. <laughs> he makes fun of everybody. This is this is the neck piece here. His neck was so meaty. I don't know why. That's what Jethro would be fighting over on the Beverly Hills. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is we have a friend, Jethro, a young teenage boy that has one mounted in his house. Are you serious? Dibby's on the neck. You caught it. <laughs> that reminds me of that first episode. They thought the flamingo was a chicken. Jethro said, yeah. it has legs this long. And Ellie Mae said, Dibby's on the drumsticks. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but it was a mingo. It wasn't no mingo. That's <laughs> love, <laughs> mingo. There you, you go, boys. Right what? You don't get in that bit more. Right? I had to try. I did. Oh, you did. She, pour the salt. You need to try it with the There's a lot of salt on the board now. I got a piece of throat. In the shop, we call that goodness. <laughs> Or Google. Oh my! Don't even watch me. <laughs> here, there's a lot right here. Good old shoulder meat. Thank you. Matter of fact, David said all he got was Google. <laughs> I think it's about ninety-five percent. Doesn't make it, don't it? Oh boy. No, I had a tree. We had a tree fail. Yeah. So well, you know, about between the, the Jeff and me. All right, now. Yeah, right. like okay. I'm sorry, folks. Sorry to walk about his tree that fell. <laughs> <laughs> well, that fell. Well, that's a good thing in my daddy. Yeah. Mmm. Mmm. Man. Right. Mm. You don't know what you're missing, John. Yeah, I do too. I've done tried two pieces of it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, folks, there you have it. McGee's first order to shoot or eat. And I'm telling you, it was fine. There wasn't anything wrong with it. I've eaten actual waterfowl that tasted worse than that. So, if you get a chance to get one, definitely try it out. That black dark meat is not, it don't leave a brown taste in your mouth. It's real good, so... Y'all have a good day. We're going to get on out of here. Glad we could share this video with you. These folks are getting ready to head home soon. We really going to miss these guys, but got to let them go. It's <laughs> just like you got to let us go. Have a great day. We'll see you on the next video.